Hi, Olivia. Um, thanks for joining us. We know you're really busy at the minute, and but all for the right reasons. Um, so, firstly, how are you, um, and how are things at camp? Um, I'm good. Camp is going great. Um, I'm so excited. This team looks really sharp, and going into our first game soon, um, I'm ecstatic to get into it. Yeah, good. Um, so talk us through uh, what you've been doing on kind of day-to-day -day basis at the minute and, and how, 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 your, how it's changed um, for you. Um, so as of right now on a day-to-day, -day, it's wake up, eat, train, recover. Recovery is the biggest thing right now. Um, we're training really hard, um, getting ready for these games. Um, but really, it's kind of a consistent thing. So that's what we're doing every day as of right now. Good, good. So maintaining that consistency. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what what kind of um, how's everyone been welcoming you into camp? I know that you know we've we've seen a lot of things published about your yeah. about your <laughs> call up. Um, so uh, what's what's the reaction been like to in the camp, but also with guys back home as well? Um, well, everyone here has been so welcoming. I mean, it's been a while since I've been back in this environment with these girls. Um, so coming back, everyone welcomed me with open arms. Everyone's so happy for me, especially back home, friends and family showing their unwavering support. It means everything to me. Um, but more specifically, being here, being comfortable with all the girls is so important as well. Um, so I'm extremely excited to be with this team right now. And yeah. Have you had have you been abundant lots of messages or uh, or has, has your phone been pinging a lot too many to handle really? Yeah, there's been a lot. Um, I've been trying to get back to everybody, but it's been a little bit difficult. But I feel like I've reached out to most of the, my close friends, close family. So still kind of going through and uh, looking for those stragglers. But yeah, good, good. So um, let's talk about. The last two years and I've sum up the last two years for me really because you were in L10 last year um and then you know it's not long after that when you've been crowned as forward of the year and all, all and the three awards that you picked up um and, and now you're here um at the world cup so uh how sum up the last two years really um honestly these past two years have flown by but they've been kind of crazy for me. Um, I officially started my college career and then the summer of last year I joined League One. Um, although it was tough because I didn't get to play all the games that I wanted to. I was kind of back and forth with um, a training environment in Michigan, but um, my experience throughout League One was amazing. Um, the teams were great. My teammates playing at North Toronto, my coaches was awesome. Um, but I think League One is like a great competitive league um and i was so fortunate to be a part of it last summer so excellent and obviously you're very prolific in front of goal um <laughs> what how were how you and you mentioned that your teammates helped you create that success how important was was not only the club environment um at north toronto but um also the opponents that you were playing against and and having been able to take the field on a regular basis yeah, um, our training environment was great. The competitiveness, like that's kind of what helped me and my teammates become better and build a better bond um, over the season. And the competition was amazing. Like Vaughn was a great team to play against. Like all these teams that are part of League One and League One is only starting to evolve. Um, I'm still keeping my tabs up on League One this season and it, it looks really competitive and good. Um, but in terms of last year, like the importance of like the competitiveness and like the talent that's in Canada and in League One, I feel like it's, it's like sometimes overlooked. Like it's definitely like once you're in it, it's like such a great environment to be in. Um, so, yeah. So how important is that level for um, not just the development of, of players yeah. and getting better, but the pathway as you've experienced? Um. I would say even for girls, I feel like a lot of them are coming back into this league from college. Um, so that experience coming in and like the younger kids also like being implemented into League One is so important. And like 
you don't even realize it, but there's so many people that are watching this league. Um, I didn't even know until the end of my season when I had like people reaching out and things like that. Like you never know who's watching, um, especially with this league only evolving. So um, yeah. Good, good. Um, what are the biggest takeaways that you've, that, that you've learned or things that you've kind of learning points and, and uh, what am I trying to say? Um, those those messages that, that stay with you. Um, what are those things that you biggest things you've taken away from League One Ontario? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've taken away from League One is that it's like the perfect environment for like development and like getting into the pathway. Um, and just like, again, like the competition is great. And it's like really the one thing that we have as of right now, um, like the highest level of soccer in Canada as of right now. And I think that's so important for the younger generation, the girls that come back from college um, to maintain that level and to then go back into like their pro environment, their college environment afterwards. Um, so I'd have to say like just its competitiveness and like the amount that it's only continuing to evolve year by year. Good. So how much um, progress did you think that you made during the year? And, and were you a, were you a um, different player coming out? I definitely think I was a different player coming out of the league. I think I definitely developed a lot more confidence in myself and in my ability um, playing in that league, but, but also finding my character on the field. Um, I know that before I even came into League One, I was kind of like the quiet player. You know, I just like to do my own thing. But being put in that environment, I felt like I was able to find a voice. Um, so I definitely think coming out of that league, I developed a lot in terms of not just as a person, but as a player, um, especially like I think I've had a great impact on my teammates and also opponents that I've played against. Um, so, yeah. And how has that then helped you help you make the transition to international games and actually taking more leadership roles like you did with uh, with the U twenties? Yeah, honestly, I'm so grateful for that experience. I definitely think League One had a big impact on that as well. Um, U twenty taking on that new leadership was I can't even tell you how amazing it felt. Um, being able to find my voice at that level meant a lot to me, but also to carry my team and lead my team um, to qualifying for a World Cup. Um, but like the most important thing was me finding my voice. And in terms of like taking on the role of a leader, that's what you need. And I think it looks different amongst everybody, but um, I definitely think um, the impact that I had on the U20s in terms of my development throughout the years was so important, especially when I'm usually the youngest on the team, finally being you know, the older one and, you know, taking younger players in and, you know, just helping them like adapt to a new environment um, meant the world to me. And, you know, you're still very young in your career. And the fact that you're saying these things is, uh, I can only bode well for the future. Do you feel now you're prepared to kind of take on whatever, whatever comes your way? Yeah, although I definitely think I have a lot more growing to do, um, adapting and everything. I think I'm definitely on the right track um, and definitely being put in environments like this will only help, um, especially on my journey to going pro, living on my own in a different country. I'm really excited and I'll only develop my character from there. Good. So let's talk about what about your aspirations moving oh. forward, obviously. Um how are you? What, what, what's, what's on your mind? Sorry, can you repeat that? It cut out for a second. Yeah, of course. No. So what are your aspirations uh, moving forward now then? Obviously going pros on the, on, on, in the pipeline and, and obviously a World Cup is right, right here, right now. So, um, but, but even moving forward beyond that, what are your aspirations? Honestly, like this was the main aspiration um, that I've been looking forward to. Never did I think it would happen this soon. Um, so I'm extremely grateful for this opportunity, but moving forward into the future, I definitely want to represent my country at an Olympics. And then also in terms of 
my pro career, I would love to play in a Champions League at some point, but um, I want to stay present and enjoy this moment. And this is definitely one of the most important aspirations for me. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Um, let's go right back to the start. And How did you and soccer meet? Oh, goodness. Um, so I was probably about three years old, ever since I could start walking, my dad, me and my dad just bond over this stuff. So it's just like, he had a ball at my feet ever since I could walk. He would sit me in front of the TV. I'd be watching film of like Marta, Sinclair, Ronaldinho, all these top ballers. And I just fell in love with it. Um, and I think at a young age, maybe I was like five or six, we noticed that there was just something different in me and my mindset and in my skill set um so we decided just to zone in on soccer um but it's something that i love and that i've loved for a really long time um so i think at the age of three was when i just me and soccer became like this so and how did that pathway transition through to, to l10 and now is do you, when, when you when do you look back across it do you is it for your pride? What are the kind of emotions? Honestly, I have to say I'm very proud of myself. Um, it's been a long journey, you know, even though it's just started. Um, there's been a lot of ups and downs in my career that were definitely, there was a lot of hard times, um, but I definitely had um, some very good moments um, like this one. Um, but um, I just want to stay in the present and um, enjoy this moment and, um, I'm excited for the future, and I know that there's obviously there's no pathway that's all sunshines and rainbows. Um, but I'm just looking forward to um, my growth and development in the next coming years. Excellent, and it's also happening off the field as well because you're part of the women's football subcommittee. Yep. Um, so, what what kind of aspirations do you have with that, and, and and the impact that you can have moving forward in the growth of the game? Yeah. Um, I think my goal of being in this committee is just to evolve women's soccer in Canada. And we have so many talented females in, in this game in Canada that, like, I want to be a role model for those girls and also advocate for them um, in a way. And um, everyone has a different story that they can relate to. And I think a big part of our subcommittee is just, like, providing equality for all girls, um, you know, because everyone has a different pathway, obviously, and everyone's route looks different. And um, it's important for us to advocate for, like, every girl that there is in League One and their talents, because um, it varies, of course. So, mm -hmm. um, What is your message to current League One Ontario players or players um, at North Toronto or players that have been in your, that might be you in your shoes now, but, you know, three years down the line, that kind of thing. What's, what's, um, what are your messages to those players? I want to say that there's no limits. It doesn't matter where you are. Um, as long as you put your head down and work hard, anything is possible. Um, and also just having a great support system is also so important. And I'm so grateful to have such a big support system and family in Canada, um, especially through League One. Um, but yeah, anything is possible and just keep working hard. Um, even when you think nobody's watching, there's somebody out there watching. Um, so live and play every minute to your fullest. Always give 100%. Um, so yeah. Good. And while you have the opportunity, the floor is yours. Is there anything else that you would like to add while, while, while you've got the chance? That's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure. Probably the hardest question I've asked. <laughs> That is the hardest question. I feel like I've kind of poured everything out already, but um, no, I just think League One is just a great environment to be in. Um, and it's definitely going somewhere in the next few years. Um, and then I'm excited to watch it grow. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, well, look, good luck uh, with everything. Um, thank we, you. We, we wish you all the best. And yeah, thank you very much for, for, for chatting with us. Thank you so much.